Sarah also came up and, and told me that she just really has a, a, a word for someone here, maybe more than one person here. And uh, as I was at the keyboard, it struck me too. There are, there are things that, that we have in our lives. There are, we, we call them addictions, um, where they're just things that just seem like they can't, we can't break them, no matter how much we want. And, and the, the benefit of the addiction is guilt and shame. <laughs> It's, it's not real. There's really no other payoff for it. Um, it seems like there's a, there's a small payoff, but, but really then there, there's not. And um, I just want to encourage you today, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction, um, whatever it is, that there is freedom in Christ. And uh, we are right now praying for you and would love to pray for you after the service. Go ahead. Okay, she figured it out. Do you know that feeling of when you have a, a child and they're struggling with something and you think, I would take that from you in a second. If I could, if only I could take this from you. And as human parents, we can't. But your heavenly father can. And he did. He loves you so much that he let his son die to break the power of addiction over your life. That's what it is. I finally figured it out. Your dad in heaven who loves you, your father who also has a mothering heart towards you, who wants to wrap you up in his arms and hold you, he will Take it, let go, say, Jesus, I need this gone and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would just pound this message into the heart of every person. It does not matter. It does not matter what has happened. What matters now is that you have the power to take this from your children, and not only the power, but the want to. We praise you, God. I thank you that this is a day of breakthrough in Jesus' name. Have our children gone? Yes, they have. Good. All right. Just want to make sure that we got that started. So each week as we've been going through the spiritual gifts that many of you have taken, uh, even more and more are sending me their, the links. And, and uh, it's, it's cool because now we have almost all of the spiritual gifts that are listed. We have almost all of them represented in our body, and that's really exciting. Um, and uh, probably, we know these tests, are they're not perfect. You could take the same test twice, and maybe you'd score differently. Although some people have taken it more than once and scored the same. Uh, the test takes a lot of things into consideration, your mood that day, how fast, you know, how fast you take it, how slow you take it, or uh, the, the perception of the person who wrote it. Maybe they think that uh, discernment is just you make good decisions, or maybe they think discerning of spirits means that you're able to tell um, the spirit behind a situation. So, so all the tests that are, that are out there and available can, can be done differently. And, and uh, just because you test and, and it says, you know, here are your top five, and you're like, well, I don't know. Um, hopefully, as we're learning about them, you're going, oh, yeah, actually, that does make sense to me or, or does not make sense to me. And um, we have a tendency to think things like the one we're going to study about today, mercy. Mercy is just goodness and brownies and unicorns, and it's all good. But that's not always what mercy is being able to say to somebody, like uh, Sarah just said, you're struggling and I want to help you out of that struggle. It's not always, you know, cheerful and happy and bright and, and all that, but sometimes it's dealing with a heavy thing because you have mercy for somebody. So we're going to get into that today. So um, <clears throat> uh, we la last week we ended the service, and I, and I encouraged anybody who needed healing of any kind, <clears throat> excuse me, to go back to under the cross. And we're going to end the service again that way. 
But um, when uh, Steve and, and Dave and I were having breakfast together Monday, um, David encouraged me. He said, you know, let, remind people, look, maybe you don't, maybe you didn't score on the faith or the healing. You still are qualified to pray over people. And uh, when the Lord gives you a word or gives you a, a sense to pray for somebody, go to them. This isn't a limit. Okay, if you're not in this if you're not in this category, please don't, you know, if you're not a craftsman, please don't touch any tools. That's not what this is about. Um, and when you have a spiritual gift, yes, you have a supernatural ability in that area over other people. And one of the things you're supposed to do with that supernatural gift is teach other people how to be better with their gift in that area. So, um, so today is about mercy. And uh, last week, you know, I, 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 there was a song that was running through my head as, I was, as we were talking about, you got to have faith. Well, today it was, have mercy on me. And if you don't remember the Judds, it was, they rode in on dinosaurs on their show. It was really cool. So, um, but anyway, so that's the song that's been kind of going through me. A mercy p person will give away the farm. <clears throat> a justice person will chase down the offender and bury them in the barnyard, okay? So, so sometimes we have, we have competing things. It's always interesting that when you have a person who is, um, uh, who, who is very, seems to be very stern in their gifting, that God will usually, in his humor and in his, uh, in his benevolence, he will partner them up with somebody who has the other, the other extreme so that they can balance each other out. And so uh, we're going to talk about that today as we go into, into mercy. So um, we need each other, okay? Um, we need each other. We need, uh, because I can't be all I'm supposed to be and do all I'm supposed to do unless you're doing all you can do and being all you can be. So we're together in a body. We're supposed to be sold out. And so I wanted to give a quickly thing. If you've gone to Gateway at any length of time at all, you've probably heard me say this. Grace and mercy are very similar concepts, but they are very different things. They're not the same. Well, you know, so gracious and so merciful is the same thing. It's not. So grace is getting what you don't deserve. We're going to give you a grace period on paying this bill. We're going to, we're going to show grace and, and let you have another opportunity. It's getting something you don't deserve, while mercy is not getting the thing you do deserve. Okay, uh, you're, you're in a softball tournament. Your team is, is uh, not quite as talented as the other team. And after the other team in the first inning has scored 11 runs, the ump stands up and he goes, you know, okay, it's the mercy rule. We're not going to make you take the beating that you obviously deserve at this point. So grace and mercy are not the same thing. And today we're talking about mercy. So if mercy is not getting what you do deserve, a person with mercy is going to do a lot of giving. A person with mercy is not going to require that justice is always served because a mercy person is actually going, yeah, yeah, I know that you, you should, you, justice would require this of you, but see, mercy, re, mercy is you're not going to get justice here. You're going to get kindness, you're going to get forgiveness and, and all that stuff. So here we are. So how many people are supposed to have mercy? Well, just the people who scored in the top five. No, 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 no. We are all supposed to have mercy. Jesus said we are all supposed to have mercy. In Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Just because you didn't score high in mercy doesn't mean that you get out of being merciful. Uh, we live from the example, the ultimate example of Jesus Christ, who is merciful to you. How merciful was Jesus to you? Just, just really moderately, because I really wasn't that bad. I mean, Jesus, he didn't really have to use that much mercy. On, no, all of us in here go, man, God, God really emptied the bank account on his mercy towards me because I really should have gotten this and I should have gotten this and I should have suffered this. But he is, he's, he's, he's just taking care of, he's not let me take what I should have taken. And then we read over in James chapter 3, <clears throat> Uh, verse 16 and 17, it says this, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, full of good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. Now, um, for those of you who are engineers in here, we have one, uh, at least one. How many engineers do we have in here? 
And I'm not talking about you drive a train. I'm talking about you're actually, you, how, you know how to figure stuff out. Now, I'm going, to use, I'm going to use a big word here. If we are to reverse engineer this verse, here's what it says to us, okay? If you reverse engineer this scriptural message, you get without purity, without peace, without reason, without mercy, without fruit, without consistency, without being authentic, you get jealousy, selfish ambition, disorder, and evil. So if you don't have those things, this is what you're going to end up with. Now, I don't, I don't want to have uh, jealousy, selfish ambition, disorder, and evil. I don't want to be sur- surrounded in that. So then I better, I better be sure that I've got purity and peace and reason and mercy and fruit and consistency and being authentic. So all of these things point to uh, living a, a Holy Spirit-filled life, and one of those great features is mercy. And some of you... Uh, have that gifting of mercy. So here we go with the definition. The gift of mercy is the divine strength or ability to feel empathy and to care for those who are hurting in any way. And I should add, and do something about it. Okay, so it's not that you just feel for them, but you want to do that. You want to help them out. You want to get them from where they are to a better place. You want to get them out of the trouble that they're in. The Greek word for the spiritual gift of mercy is E-L-E-E-O, ilio. It means to be patient and compassionate towards those who are suffering and afflicted. Now, here's a good sign. Mike, do I have the gift of mercy? I don't, are you patient with people? No. <laughs> Even pe- people who are really struggling? Nah, not so much. I'm like, Come on, get up, get up, come on, pick up yourself, get moved. Okay, well, maybe that's, maybe that's not your spiritual gifting, but you still have to be merciful. Um, they're able to come along, people who have mercy are able to come alongside people over an extended period of time and see them through their healing process. Okay, so all Christians have this, uh, this Holy Spirit gift of, of mercy, but some of us, some of you, I should say, have um, the spiritual gifting of mercy. And the reason I said some of you is because that was not in my top five. I'm not going to pretend. I do think I have mercy, but Sally scored higher in mercy than I did, which did that shock both of us? Ah, that's the first she's heard of it. It's like, what? <coughs> Maybe the, we got we gotta, no, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Keenan's. Keenan's out of the will, obviously. So, um, so uh, a, a mercy person is sensitive to the feelings and circumstances of others, can quickly discern when someone is not doing well. They are typically good listeners and feel the need to simply be there for others. And uh, so, okay, that's, I'm, just, I'm just covering this all for you. So Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8 says this, and this is, so uh, all, the, all of the, the things that we've done so far came out of the first Corinthian scripture. This is, I think, the first one that we've got that's not out of the first Corinthian scripture. This is the, the list of, of gifts that we find in Romans chapter 12, and I'm really going to pick up the pace here. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So these, these gifts, I think it's interesting though when you read these gifts, did you notice that some of them are like, you teach, so you're going to teach. You know, you do this, so you're gonna, and it's the same thing. But there are some of these that, that are a little different.